This recording will show you how to do a simple multidimensional scaling analysis. This is a very small data set which I just created myself. It's basically my subjective evaluation of the stylistic distance between six classical composers from Bach to Wagner. What I've done here is I've each row represents the same composer in order I've really got in the column. So the rows here I haven't written them in, there's no way to write this in on SPSS, but row one is Bach, row two is Beethoven, row three is the third column, Debussy, and so on. And each number represents my subjective judgment of the stylistic distance between two composers. So row two corresponds to Beethoven. Be Beethoven is, I judge, five units distant from Debussy. Um, this one, row four, is Handel. Handel is ten units distant from Wagner, I would judge. Row two is Beethoven. Beethoven. Beethoven is much closer to Wagner, I would judge, in style, so I've just given that a two. There's no need to fill in all the entries in, this, uh, in these rows and columns because, the, if you like, the matrix all the, is symmetric. In other words, if I wanted to know what was in row three, column two, it's the same as row two, column three. And in fact, SPSS will recognize this um, and will recognize that all the data it needs is in this, uh, in this triangle here. I'll show you how it is, uh, does it in a moment. The first thing I want to um, know is how to access the program, which is through Analyze, Scale, and Multidimensional Scaling. There are two alternatives of which I'm going to choose ProxCal. If you remember when we did factor analysis, I said that one of the, the first Question: One of the first judgment calls you need to make is how many um, how many factors to extract, and in fact, there's a similar question that you have to address here. It's a program that's quite similar to factor analysis in many ways. And to um, to analyze that, the first thing you can do is to put all these cases here into the proximities box. I'm going to have to uh, going to have to do that anyway. Now, go into model and change the default setting, because at this stage we're going to want to keep our options open as to how many dimensions there are. We certainly don't want to limit it to two. I put my one as the minimum, which you can always do. number I put in here, five, is one less than the total number of cases. We've got six composers, I six columns. There's no point in, in putting more than, um, uh, than six minus one, five, because that's the maximum number of dimensions that it can that uh, SIG's object can lie inside. So I'm going to put that as 5. Uh, now the next thing I want to do is to get the equivalent of a scree plot in, in factor analysis. To do that, uh, the equivalent is a stress plot. So I'm going to tick that box. At this stage, I don't want the, the common space plot. It's just going to take up too much processing time, and it's not going to tell me anything useful. So I'm going to con continue OK. Now, yeah, it hasn't actually done what I want, and there's a reason for that. Um, and the reason for that is that when I went into model, I did not tick upper triangular matrix. What I've got here in the, uh, in the data set is not lower triangular, it's upper triangular. So let's do that and try it again now. Now this is familiar to you from factor analysis. It is a Cree plot, but its interpretation is slightly different. Just as in factor analysis, you see a very clearly defined elbow here. But in factor analysis, if this were a Cree plot here, we would say, well, this is a this is a one-factor solution. We've got one factor represented up here, and the rest is Cree. When we're doing a multidimensional scaling, we approach it kind of from the opposite, opposite way around. The vertical axis is represents stress. In other words, it's the, it's the degree of ease or difficulty with which the data can be pushed into a space of a certain dimensionality. It can always be fitted into a five-dimensional space. And what this plot tells us is that there's no increase in stress, effectively, down to two dimensions. Now, what this is telling us is that if we try to f squeeze all the data into one dimension, it's starting to protest loudly here. So 
two dimensions is the correct number of dimensions to to choose in this case. So it's kind of that it's different from factor analysis. In factor analysis, we take the uh, we 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 take the plot above the elbow. In multidimensional scaling, we take we look at the elbow itself and we look at the dimensionality for that. And it's two dimensions. We now go back and put that data into our analysis. Um, so we're going to put it in there. We're going to keep the dimensions to maximum and minimum to two. Now I'm going to do a plot. At this stage, we do require the, the common space button to be checked. Now this this gives us um, the plot of the data set in two dimensions. At this stage, we can't really say, and SPSS doesn't tell us what to call these dimensions, any more than it tells us in factor analysis what names to give the factor. But what it does do is to show, as it were, how my subjective judgments of all these composers have panned out in a two-dimensional space. This is fitting all these composers into space, such as to give a distance which is, corresponds as closely as possible to the distance that I've given them. So we see that Bach and Debussy are a long way apart, as are Bach and Wagner. And going back into the data set, yeah, Bach, uh, which is the first row, and Debussy, Wagner, long distance apart. Fair distance from Beethoven, but very close to Handel and Mozart. And we see here that Indeed, the distance handled to Mozart uh, from Bach is quite small. Well, it doesn't look very enlightening, except that I suppose you could say it's kind of interesting that if we look at on dimension one, the sequence of composers is the historical sequence. You know, Bach came first, Handel, Mozart, Beethoven, Wagner, and Debussy. It also suggests that there's some similarity between Bach and Debussy as compared with all the rest. I don't know what that could perhaps be, but it might at least be suggestive. This is a very small data set, and therefore um, the conclusions to be drawn from it are very limited. You'd need to get similar estimates of proximity from, say, a sample of maybe professional musicians. This might give some much more enlightening results. Just to show you the sort of way in which you could um, add to this, however, I will I will suppose that we have another composer. Let's say we have Stockhausen in here. We decide to add this one and to see how this affects the result. And I'll just um, I'll put that in there, just to abbreviate that. And so let's suppose how close is Stockhausen to all these composers to Bach, well, I don't know, I shall give a... I suppose if one says it's very abstract, then it might be thought to be quite close. So I'll give that four. Uh, close to Beethoven, well, as distant, let's say. Debussy? Uh, I don't know. Handel, yeah, let's give it slightly more. Uh, Mozart, Stockhausen. It's quite distant. And uh, number six to Wagner, maybe that give that a ten. And obviously Stockhausen is distant naught from himself. So let's try doing this again. Uh, this time we have to remember to put the extra case in here. And let's go into model. I've got to do the whole analysis again, so let's put we got seven composers now, so we can go up to six. And plot, I'm going to just do a stress plot. This is just to see if we still have a two-dimensional space. Well, yeah, it looks very two-dimensional, doesn't it? So we'll go back and put two dimensions in the model. And this time we want a, a common space plot and see how it turns out. 
I have no idea what this will look like, but well, we've got a kind of circle going on there with um, Stockhausen high in the dimension, whatever it was, that distinguished Bach from Mozart or Debussy from Mozart. Stockhausen seems to be going even further in that direction. Again, this is very much based on a sort of intuitive feeling by one person, and there's no real um, credibility that can be put on that. But if you've got a number of musicians and their average judgments were pretty close to something like this, you may you might start to think that well there was you might start to look into what it was that might comprise these these two dimensions and you might arrive at some interesting conclusions. So I'm gonna stop it there.